a jolt on a quiet fault. On January 20, 2026, at 0156 Coordinated Universal Time, a moderate magnitude quake struck off the southern tip of the San Andreas Fault near Indio, California. Seismologists report it as magnitude 4.9, centered about 19 kilometers 12 miles north-northeast of Indio, at a shallow depth of roughly 3 kilometers 2 miles. Within minutes, dozens of smaller shocks followed, dozens of aftershocks ranging from magnitude 1 up to 3.5. For local residents, this was unsettling. Is the fault waking up? Could this be the herald of something bigger? This swarm is notable because no larger quake has been recorded in this Coachella Valley segment in over a century. Is the southern San Andreas quietly shedding stress or merely grumbling as it has for decades? Geologists know the San Andreas Fault, SAF, marks a major transform boundary in California. Here, the Pacific Plate slides northwest past the North American Plate, grinding along a nearly straight fracture in the crust. This shearing motion is roughly on the order of a few centimetres per year. In fact, the fault currently slips at about four to six centimetres annually, roughly two inches each year, accumulating several metres of strain per century. Over time, the fault locks and bends under this relentless plate motion. Strain builds like a stretched rubber band until it suddenly snaps back. This is elastic rebound theory, the fundamental process of earthquakes. As USGS geologists explain, the crust of the earth can gradually store elastic stress that is released suddenly during an earthquake, causing a jolt along the fault. In other words, the plate's slow push is transformed into an instant slip and seismic wave, a web of fractures. In the southern reach near Indio, the San Andreas is not a single neat break, but a cluster of related faults. Maps and field studies show that as the SAF approaches the Salton Sea region, it branches into multiple strands that share the strain. One main trace, often called the Mission Creek Strand, lies under Desert Hot Springs and leads into Indio, while the nearby Banning Strand runs roughly parallel to the south. To the west lie other faults like the San Jacinto and Elsinore. Each strand may take up part of the slip from plate motion. For example, detailed measurements on the Banning Strand reveal a long-term slip of only about four to five millimetres per year, just a quarter or so of the section's total motion. In plain terms, scientists say that the Banning Strand moves only 25 to 35 percent of the slip carried by the southern San Andreas. The rest must be accommodated by the main Mission Creek Strand. Or nearby faults. In effect, the fault system in Coachella Valley is like a braided river, several channels sharing the flow. Any one segment can stick and slip independently, passing stress to its neighbors. The January Tremor. The sequence on January 20th appears to have been triggered on one of these strands beneath Indio. The 4.9 event was fairly shallow about three kilometers deep, suggesting it occurred on a crustal fault patch rather than deep in the mantle. By global standards, this is a moderate shock, roughly the size of a large heavy truck rolling over your foot. But it is noteworthy here because the adjacent parts of the southern fault system rarely see such quakes. Instrumental records back to the late 1800s show only smaller events near Indio in recent decades, several in the magnitude 4 range in the 1990s and 2000s. No magnitude 5 or above has been recorded in this exact area since modern seismographs began monitoring California. In fact, earthquake catalogues and historical studies suggest the last truly massive rupture on the southern San Andreas was the Fort Tejon earthquake of 1857, 
magnitude approximately 7.9, far larger than anything in this century. That event offset the ground by over 6 meters 20 feet in places, a reminder that this fault can produce very large quakes. This means the January shock, though gentle compared to a major rupture, is the largest in this vicinity in many decades. Yet in earthquake terms, it is still small, releasing only a tiny fraction of the energy needed for a catastrophe. Stress and strain on the fault. How exactly does a segment give way? Imagine two rough rock faces pressed together under enormous pressure. As the plates shove these faces in opposite directions, friction holds them locked until the stress exceeds the rock's strength. When that threshold is reached, the fault abruptly slips, and the stored elastic energy sends seismic waves through the crust. Geologists refer to this as the elastic rebound mechanism. It is like bending a stick until it snaps back into place. For the San Andreas, the picture is of blocks of crust moving slowly past each other. Most of the motion is gradual and aseismic. Some parts of the fault even creep continuously a few millimetres per year without noticeable earthquakes. But other patches remain locked. In the Coachella Valley segment, it seems much of the slip is accommodated by steady creep or minor earthquakes, rather than big ruptures. The January 20th event suggests that one such patch finally slipped. In an aftershock sequence like this, static stress changes play a role. The main shock redistributed stress on neighboring fault sections, sometimes bringing them closer to failure. Areas where stress rose are more likely to crack and slip soon after. This can cluster earthquakes along a fault strand or even jump to a nearby strand. However, none of the aftershocks so far have exceeded magnitude 3.5, indicating that the local fault adjustments are small. Over the coming days, the rate of these small quakes should fall off. Seismologists will continue to chart them. Each aftershock's location helps map the fault geometry and properties. Some folklore and preliminary reports claim this is the strongest earthquake in this area since 1800. Strictly speaking, instrumental records do not go back that far here, but geological studies do suggest the southernmost SAF has been mostly quiescent for a long time. In fact, one study finds that the Coachella Valley segment has shown only low rates of shallow creep over the past three centuries, with no known large ruptures in that interval. In other words, the fault does not break very often here. This might explain why a moderate shock like magnitude 4.9 jumps out. The ground has not seen a release this size for generations. Why now? There is no simple warning system that predicts when a given segment will slip. The build-up of stress is constant, but the breaking point depends on the unpredictable details of rock strength and fracture geometry. Some scientists wonder if heavy rainfall, human activity, or even passing seismic waves from distant quakes might nudge a fault, but nothing specific has been identified here. Most likely, this event was the inevitable result of the Pacific Plate's inexorable push. Enough strain had accumulated at this particular patch that it finally gave way. In that sense, it is simply part of the San Andreas doing what it always does, storing and releasing energy. Even though this quake was modest, it offers valuable clues about the fault's behavior. Every tremor teaches seismologists about the subsurface. Aftershock patterns can reveal the orientation and roughness of the fault plane and how brittle or ductile the surrounding rock is. By analysing the waveform and motion, researchers can refine models of how stress moves through the earth. 
In a heavily populated and heavily studied region like Southern California, even small quakes help calibrate earthquake hazard forecasts. In the big picture, scientists stress that no single moderate quake is a reliable foreshock for a larger one. The southern San Andreas is overdue for a big rupture by some estimates, return periods of a few centuries, but that does not mean every tremor is a sign of an impending disaster. Looking ahead. For now, the Indio area is settling back toward equilibrium. The aftershock activity should dwindle over days to weeks, and Earth scientists will watch whether any new clusters emerge. If nothing unexpected occurs, this sequence will fade into memory as one of many small reminders that California's crust is alive. But of course, when it comes to major quakes on the San Andreas, the legendary big one, only time will tell. For residents and engineers alike, even a small event like this is a timely prompt to check readiness. After all, the SAF can generate the region's largest magnitude earthquakes, up to roughly 8.2. In the meantime, curious observers might ask, is the fault simply releasing a bit of pressure or hinting at deeper stress underneath? Only careful monitoring and more data will answer that. One thing is clear, under Southern California, the Earth never truly sleeps. It just keeps shifting, one tremor at a time. If you found this breakdown useful, please like the video, share it with colleagues or fellow science enthusiasts, and subscribe for more technical updates. Tap the hype icon to boost the visibility of accurate, evidence-based information and help this content reach people who need it.